right. Well, I do want to talk about the Trump lawsuit this morning because on Thursday in a federal court in Florida, pr former President Donald Trump has filed a lawsuit against former presidential candidate Hillary Clinton, as well as her campaign and her, um, we're going to call them her friends, her colleagues, her co-workers in this effort. He is alleging that her role in tying his campaign to Russia is what started all manner of headaches for him and is what continues to offer him headaches in terms of investigations, um, litigation, things that persist for him even after his presidency has ended. Now, the mainstream media was very quick to laugh this off. I saw some headlines this morning saying Trump headlines may fake, um, Trump lawyers may face sanction or disbanding over bringing a lawsuit that is frivolous. So the mainstream media would have you believe this is a political move. He just wants the attention. Um, it's a frivolous lawsuit, perhaps. Right. And so Clayton and I tried to make our way through it. It was a hundred. It's one hundred and eight pages of claim. Now, when you open a game of litigation, you sort of throw in the kitchen sink. You have to. You name everybody you can. Anyone you can shake a, loss, a stick at, you can sue. You name every possible legal violation of what they did, and you lay out what you think is the worst case. It's your opening salvo, and you have to exaggerate, right? But then comes the responses. And I think this is interesting because you have to know he's been sued enough times and has sued enough people to know that once you get into litigation, you open yourself up to discovery of all manner of things. Now, I did read the book Where Law Ends by uh, Andrew... Um, I can't think of his name right now. Clayton um, just went to get Grover and he can show you the title of the book. Um, I read, I've read. i read a lot about the Mueller investigation, enough to know that President Trump actually went out of his way not to participate in that investigation. And he did dangle pardons in front of anybody who he wanted to discourage from participating. And they were always well-timed pardons. So as soon as the federal investigators would sort of circle around somebody, Trump would say either publicly or privately, well, maybe this pardon would be... Um, it was very... It was what they were well placed. Right. So we can be sure that the former president really tried not to participate in an investigation about any connections with Russia. So why then would he open himself up to a lawsuit about Russian investigation when he will have to then participate in discovery, he will have to, um, because truth is an absolute defense. So then if the Clinton campaign, if the federal government, if anyone related to Christopher Steele, who was the person who wrote the doc dossier that said, perhaps Vladimir Putin has things on Trump that are embarrassing. And that's why Vladimir Putin exerts this kind of control over Trump. If those things are true, then that is an absolute defense. So now there is a court. He is opening himself up to allow the Democrats to prove it or disprove it right so it's it's more risky than just like a political move for so that he could say hey you know they did this to me i sued them because it was so untrue um more the name defendants include christopher Steele, debbie wasserman schultz uh the former head of the democratic national committee and all sorts of other democratic strategists uh, i think what will be interesting here is that they each now have to respond you have to respond to lit litigation you don't have a choice once you're named you're in the fight. That's how it works. And so it's highly unlikely that these people will all use the same legal defense. Um, I would be really pissed off if they used any kind of government resources in their legal defense. Um, but I don't think there will be any way for them to do that. So now they all have to lawyer up with hardcore lawyers. Most of them will issue what's called a motion to dismiss saying this is ridiculous. We're not even going to play this game. Maybe it goes forward. Maybe it doesn't. There's no secure answer to that. Um, but now it will result in infighting between these Democratic leaders. And it's interesting. I, th I think at the very least, it's interesting, no matter what we think of it, because it would be incredibly stupid for him to have gone out of his way not to participate in the Mueller investigation and then open himself up, do the same thing in his own private litigation. Why? Yeah. I mean, like, again, I think where there's smoke, there's fire. I mean, that's my take on all of this, right? Because 
a few weeks ago, of course, we had some you know big stories surrounding this coming out about the the involvement of the Democratic Party and what they were trying to do. And so maybe that was the impetus for all of this. But in the lawsuit specifically, it says, you know, under the guise of opposition research, data analytics and other political stratagems, the defendants nefariously sought to sway the public's trust. They worked together with a single self-serving purpose to vilify Donald Trump. Indeed, their far-reaching conspiracy was designed to cripple Trump's bid for the presidency by fabricating a scandal that would be used to trigger an unfounded federal investigation and ignite a media frenzy. Okay, that's actually, so that is at least something that I know from the, it, the book is called Where Law Ends by Andrew Weissman, and he was one of the lead investigators on the, um, yes, this is, this is the book, on the Mueller investigation. And he specifically said that what he thought, I have a few clips, the first one there, um, what he really, okay, so this is interesting. He says that contrary to claims by Trump loyalists, the factual pre predicate for the investigation had nothing to do with the Steele dossier because if you read up higher, the FBI had already opened an investigation into possible links between Russia and Trump in July of 2016, a year before the appointment of Mueller and predated to the Steele dossier. So that in and of itself is interesting, right? If that, if that already exists, if we already know that, then this may or may not have anything to do with Hillary Clinton. He further says that there is actually a lot of information. Um, they, they had so much communication between the Russians and the Trump campaign. And what specifically the Russians wanted was when Trump got into office was an end to sanctions. Right. The inkling, he says, for us, this was the first inkling to what the Russian government really wanted from their involvement with the Trump administration, which is an end to sanctions. Whether or not this was actually um, like nefarious communication was never proved in the Mueller investigation because a lot. Because what Weissman says is that they knew that the president could not have his day in court and you cannot impugn someone that you will not give their day in court. So they didn't, which is exactly what James Comey did, right? He talked about Hillary Clinton like she did bad things, but not bad enough. So that's the end of the email scandal investigation, um, which most people think was extremely unethical because he impugned her without giving her the right to defend herself. Um, and so this is why Mueller would not name Trump in any kind of crimes because he knew the president could not be tried fairly in court. Right. But there was plenty of smoke there. So, you know, a lot of I mean, it did to th seem to indicate that the Trump organization just didn't know what was and was not allowed. So they were talking to Russians as if, oh, really, you can do that. I mean, it was just kind of like the Trump children, like, sure, I'll take a look at that. Not really knowing because they weren't political players right. before that. And then it just got worse and worse because they didn't know any better. But at the same time, they know now why will they op open themselves up to this investigation? I don't know. I mean, it, to, to me, this is not, I, I know the mainstream media, I saw an article, a couple articles, they're like, they immediately had like holes shot in this, you know, they're like, it was some associated press piece or whatever. And they were like, you know, uh, we, we brought in legal minds and they shot holes in this thing. It's a laughable lawsuit. It's like, okay, he was the president of the United States. He's filing a lawsuit against Hillary Clinton, among other people for among other things, collusion, uh, fraud. Um, oh, the list is endless in this lawsuit. Yes. And I think there's six, 16 different counts uh, that they specifically lay out here in this. So you don't just do that. I mean, well, the, that this is so interesting, right? Because the Mueller investigation, they refused to say exactly what the president had done wrong, but they had plenty that he lays out in the book that they thought were like, this is probably something, but because the president cannot be tried while he's in office, we can't impugn him, right? So then why now is the president choosing to be tried? This is, it just, it doesn't make a lot of sense um, as a political move. It doesn't seem like something we should just throw away. And it does seem like we will at least, at the very least, we're going to get interesting defenses that are not coordinated from Democratic named defendants. Well, okay, and, and, but I guess because Trump's yeah. big thing is he believes there's no such thing as bad press, so he doesn't, you know, he's going to be out there I in a big way. I think that's that's highly over that's overly simplistic for something that's one hundred and eight. 
But he paid for this legal document, which is inflammatory. And it, it, I don't know. I, I feel like that can't uh, maybe be it's him answer. setting himself up for for, you know, for for the next run in 2024. And this is like a precursor but to I that. I don't think he needs it. I think that the people who would vote for him don't care about Russian collusion no, anymore. Absolutely. Uh, that's the case. I don't think so. Even in this sort so of appetite here. for Russian uh, vengeance. I think the I think the thing that we yeah, the reason I think we wanted to do this story is because it, it I, I don't believe the mainstream media argument on this, that this is just a laughable lawsuit and it's got tons of holes in it. Like that's, you know, mainstream media aside, there's something here. Like there's something, there's something bigger. And I think, I think the Trump administration, or I think the Trump tr team Trump wants to get access through discovery to what the Democrats are hiding, mm -hmm. what they have access to, what do those emails say? What were they colluding about um, in the same way that they've gone after him for so many years? Yeah. We'll see. Let us know your I, thoughts. I don't know. I, I, yeah. I don't understand it, but I also don't want to throw it in the trash either. I want to watch it. All of us. Well, I think that there's there's Trump, you know, he's the arrogance and and confidence. And it's a lot of times his arrogance gets him in trouble. So he's probably arrogantly confident that he is going to come out clean on this, which he might not. But he's got so many people around him that are obviously telling him to go forward with it. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, we have a membership program for the price of a cup of coffee once a month. You can support independent journalism just by going to morninginvest.com slash join. You get access to exclusive videos, plus the ability to join and chat with us live. We really appreciate your subscription and you are supporting independent journalism.